he was a prayerful man. He prayed endlessly. Endlessly here combines the word effectual and fervent. He prayed endlessly. He prayed endlessly that it might not rain and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Endlessly, one day he went to Ahab and said, my name is Elijah the, Elijah the Tisbach. I live or I dwell in the inhabitant of Gilead. And according to the word of the Lord, as I live, it shall not rain. Okay. You see, so many faith preachers have said he was a man of faith. He went there and declared, it shall never rain. And it did not rain. But James is now giving us details as to why it did not rain. It wasn't a faith confession. It was a prayer. It wasn't a faith confession. It, it wasn't a faith confession. It's be thou. And it, it, it is that. You don't do anything about it, but it happens. No. So many people think that when he went to the king to say, it shall not rain, it was a faith confession. It wasn't a faith confession. It was something. He did something to bad his word. So when he said it, he went to pray. And the Bible said he was a man subject to like passions. And he prayed endlessly. He prayed fervently and effectual. That it shall not rain. And according to the space of three and a half years, the word that he spoke came to us. So one of the things that makes our word that we speak, sometimes when people make faith confession, it shall be well with me. I'm going to break through this faith confession alone is not enough. You need to back it with prayer. You need to do something. Because the Bible says faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. So just saying it is good, but you need to back it with something. Okay. And he prayed again. You see, he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain. Look at it. He prayed first time and said, It shall not be rain. And heaven closed, closed it and it didn't rain. And within the space of three and a half years, the man prayed again and heaven gave rain. It means that heaven only answers prayer. What heaven does is heaven only answers prayer of the righteous people. When Elias said it must not rain, heaven answered. And when he went to pray again that it should rain, heaven also listened to it and heaven answered. It means that the Bible says God is a prayer answering God. So anytime you are praying effectively, God will answer you. And whatever you are laying before him, I mean, it shall be done. So if you were examining Elias' life here, you say, ha, ah, what a powerful man of God. What is his secret? He said it shall not rain, and it didn't rain. He said it should rain, and it rained. What is the secret? The secret was nothing but prayer. Prayer. And he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Listen, listen. Pastor, the righteous is also very heavy, eh? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. I mean the qualifications the of, of, of a, a righteous uh, person. No, for Elijah, for us, you, when you are talking, mm -hmm. as how he he prayed and it didn't come. Apart from the types of prayer, mm -hmm. he was a righteous. righteous too. Too. Yeah, if you are not righteous, your prayer will always <laughs> will hit the bar yeah, and, 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 and the devil will quote that. Oh, this is mine. That's right. The devil will swallow it. So we <laughs> need to try to live righteous. Here doesn't mean that. You are totally white. It means that you are right in that particular thing you are doing. You don't have any blockades around you. It says that we should confess. Even before you start praying, you need to confess. That when you confess at that particular time you find yourself in, before God, you are white as snow. So God, that's why you're saying that God deals with that by mercy. You see, Righteous doesn't mean that you are without a sin. Without a sin means that you are not only righteous, you are God. But 
right, tells me that when even you fall, you sin, you know you have sin, and then you, uh, you want to do it right with God and stop that behavior. And he prayed again. When he prayed again, look at the things that happened. Heaven gave rain. And when heaven gave rain, what, what happened? The earth produced. You see. So the earth can never pro, uh, produce fruit until heaven gives rain. Is that correct? Yes. And heaven will never give rain until there is a prayer. Yes. So it means that the, before the earth will give its fruit for us to be successful, when you talk about the earth giving its fruit, it means that everything you are doing, you are being successful. The earth is supporting you. Everything you are, you are being prosperous, you are being fulfilled uh, in, in fulfillment. Everything you are doing is increasing. It means that you cannot take prayer outside anything because prayer will now let the rain of God come. So when the rain of God comes, then the earth, earth will give fruit. So we should do well not to leave prayer outside anything that we do. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he which convert the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death mm. Mm. and shall hide a multitude of sin. Verse 20. Let him not Oh, brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, what does it mean? Hmm. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, brethren, if any of you deviate from the truth and one convert him, if you do something wrong against the truth, the truth is the word of God. The truth is Jesus. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So anytime you err, anytime you deviate, any, anytime you move from the truth, it means that you, you need somebody to convert you, somebody to change you from that part you, are, you have taken. So anytime somebody like that, somebody is on the wrong path and we correct him, we convert him, we change him. The Bible says we are saving a soul. Let's read the verse 20. Mm -hmm. The verse 20. Let him know that he that he which converted the sinner from the error of sin of his way shall save a soul from death. So anytime we convert people, anytime our action, maybe you talk to somebody or you try to win somebody for Christ, you are saving a soul from death. You are saving a soul from death doesn't mean that the person will never die again. But you are taking the person's life from eternal destruction into eternal glory of God. The same way if we also cause other people to sin or to move out from the faith and then like he was here, I've moved the person out of it. It means that you are moving somebody from the eternal life to eternal damnation, which is um, which has more consequences. So we should rather be converting people for God rather than be converting people for the enemy. You know, sometimes some people are in the church or some people are in Christ, but they are working for the devil. That is too dangerous. That is too dangerous because Every human being in the church, God needs that person, and the devil too needs that person. So we need to be very careful with the things we do and try to convert people. So basically, this is what James wrote to the people. And today, he has written this book to us that number one, we should not we should not look down and cheat people. We should not look, use our position to, I mean, hurt other people. But we have to rather encourage other brethren to stay in the Lord. And he was talking about how if any is sick, we should call for the elders. He was talking about how is any afflicted. And we differentiated between affliction and the affliction is not the same as sickness. Because here he said, if any among you afflicted, then he came down to say, is any of you sick? You see, then here, that particular affliction he's talking about is not sickness. It's different from sickness. 
Sometimes you are not sick, but you are not well. You see, there are so many things that will make you feel very weak, apart from sickness. You see, and that one you cannot call anybody to come and pray for you. That one you need to stand on your feet and pray. Is any of you afflicted? Let him pray. But if you are sick, you need somebody to pray for you. You get the difference. When you are afflicted, you are not sick, you can pray. When things are not going well, you are not sick, you can pray. But when you are sick, he says the church, the elders of the church, and then I explain that it's not everybody that can be an elder of a church. The elder of a church is the same as maybe a bishop or a pastor of a church. The person must be ready to exercise pastoral functions. So if that person is not up to that level, there is no business conferring that title elder on, 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 on him. Amen. Yeah, let's pray. Father, Lord, we are most grateful once again unto you. We thank you, Father, for your graciousness. Help us, O oh Lord, that we shall be converting people, O oh God, unto your eternal kingdom. Father, O oh Lord God, help us and show us your face. Let your glory be so great on us. Father, give us your power and of your grace that at the end, when all works together for good as you God has ordained it for us, we will not forget to thank you. We bless your holy name in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.